Hi all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to share an absolutely disgusting story with you about a children's book author and her husband who have been charged with abusing their three adopted children to the point where one of the children is now hospitalized in critical condition. Author Jennifer Wolfthal from Castleberry, Florida was arrested on January 1st of 2021 after her husband, Joseph Wolfthal, took their eight-year-old adopted daughter to the hospital for a number of ailments and injuries, including pneumonia, a staph infection, and liver failure. After doctors determined that the child's injuries weren't accidental, they notified the police to investigate. When they questioned Joseph Wolfthal about the child's illnesses and injuries, he claimed that the girl had fallen three times, hitting her head once on a desk and a second time on a toilet. He told police he works 10-hour days as an engineer and that Jennifer, his wife, cares for their three adopted children and disciplines them. He told police he fears his wife, and one time when he tried to intervene when she was disciplining the children, she punched him in the chest and knocked him to the ground. He also said she locked him in a laundry room as a timeout. The little eight-year-old girl, who was in critical condition, was transferred to another hospital, suffering from a staph infection, sepsis, renal and liver failure, open and infected wounds, skin infections, bruising, pneumonia in her lungs, and malnutrition. All that, coupled with the fact that police didn't believe Joseph's story about how she acquired her injuries, prompted police to perform a wellness check on the other adopted children in the home, finding that they also presented symptoms of malnourishment, bruises, and lack of care. Both children were treated for open wounds, skin infections, and malnutrition. Police then arrested 41-year-old Jennifer Wolfthal and charged her with child neglect with great bodily harm and domestic violence battery. Jennifer bonded out of jail, but was rearrested after the children were interviewed about the abuse they suffered. The children also told police that Joseph was involved with abusing them as well. So Joseph was also arrested and charged with child neglect with great bodily harm, aggravated child abuse, and false imprisonment of a child under 13. After two of the children were released from the hospital, they were placed in foster care. The eight-year-old little girl is still hospitalized. WFTV reported that the couple had recently filed for divorce, and they adopted the three children in 2014. So, they adopted these three poor children, abused them, and the children had to be removed from their adoptive home and placed back in foster care. Those poor babies. God bless them. If they ever learn to form bonds of trust with anyone in their lives, it'll be a damn miracle. And you know who's going to pay for all that shit that was done to them? Someone who genuinely loves them. Because that's how it always happens. By the time someone comes along who genuinely loves them, they won't believe it after everything they've been through. It's absolutely disgusting that anyone or any couple would adopt children that they don't really want, just to abuse them, or for the money they receive for them. Which makes me think of missing adopted brothers Orrin and Orson West from Cal City, California, who were adopted and disappeared, apparently off the face of the earth. And their adopted pieces of crap haven't even bothered to help look for them. Even for appearances' sake. Because they don't care. They never did. The three adopted children in Florida told police that their adoptive parents took turns abusing them. They said they were spanked over and over again, in the same spot, until they bled. They had cold water dumped on them at night in bed, and were forced to sleep in a wet bed all night. They were locked in their rooms for hours and denied food. One of the girls told police she was punished because she couldn't stop sinning or if she wet the bed, or for not eating the food that was provided. 
Detectives said the children were fed a mixture of bran flake cereal, water, and vegetable puree. The children were also forced to write apology statements several hundred times. And one child said she mostly spent the entire day in her room writing sentences at her desk. Police found that the children were made to sleep on mattresses with just a plastic cover and a pillow. One child said she was told to lay flat on her bed all day and not move. When police searched their home, they found numerous notebook pages from a trash can in the garage containing written punishments. One of the children who was examined in the hospital was found to have a severe laceration to her lip and at least one chipped tooth, as well as blackened and bruised eyes, and an abrasion that was red and bleeding on her upper neck and back. When questioned about her injuries, Joseph tried to convince police that she was injured by brushing her teeth too hard, causing her mouth to bleed. You know, because we've all done that. You know, brushed our teeth so damn hard that we chipped a tooth and cut our lip from it. So... Makes sense. What an idiot. Jennifer Wolfthau is currently being held without bail in Seminole County Jail. Joseph Wolfthau posted $45,000 bond in his case and was released. When reached by phone by news sources, he declined to comment on his arrest or the allegations against him. Now, I mentioned earlier that Jennifer is a children's book author. She wrote a book called A Real Friend. The irony, huh? But anyway, her book was reportedly removed from sale by her publisher, according to People.com. But because I'm nosy, and I had to check it out for myself, I found that it was not. It is currently listed for sale on Amazon, and is probably still being sold through a number of other booksellers. So, I want to let you know about it so you don't buy it for someone you love because you don't know it was written by a piece of shit child abuser. The publisher of her book does have a statement on the Amazon page featuring Jennifer's book, which reads as follows. At Clevis, we believe that children are beautiful and deserve our utmost respect and care. That is why we publish books to enrich their lives and help them grow up learning to know themselves, how to interact with others in a good way, and how the world works. We were made aware of the horrific news regarding one-time Clavis author Jennifer Wolfthau's arrest and strongly condemned child abuse, abandonment, and neglect today and always. We will do what's within our power to cease commercialization of her book any further. And so will I. I will be posting the information about her arrest, her charges, and her book on the social media sites I've recently set up for my channel to help spread the word so she doesn't make a dime from posing as a decent human being when she's nothing more than an evil monster. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can follow my channel's pages at true underscore crimer on both sites if you'd like. I'll try to post interesting things on both sites that I don't cover on my channel. I hope her book gets pulled from the shelves and the internet ASAP, and I hope the two of them rot in prison, since they are of no good use to us out in society. May those precious children make full recoveries and get the extensive therapy they're going to need to try to understand that what was done to them was not their fault. It was the abusive actions of disgusting, evil, broken individuals who obviously hate their own selves to the point where they are unable to understand or show love to others. For that reason alone, they are already residing in their own personal hells. I hope these children are placed in loving homes with incredible families who show them how valued they are so they learn to trust and love in their own lives. I covered the story of a waitress who saved a boy from his abusive parents by holding up signs to ask him if he needed help in her restaurant in a previous video. She is a true hero. Well, I wanted to share with you what is happening in her life since she showed the world how incredibly brave she was that day. 
according to OrlandoSentinel.com, Flavian Carvalho, whose heroic actions saved an 11-year-old boy and his sister from life-threatening abuse from their parents, was honored by Florida's Agricultural Commissioner for her bravery and quick thinking when she noticed the abused boy in her restaurant, and she was presented with a proclamation designating January 28, 2021, to be Flavian Carvalho Child Advocacy Day in the state of Florida, which is so incredibly well-deserved. Since her story went viral, people have been going to the restaurant with checks in hand, and even more have called the restaurant's phone line to ask how to show their support for Carvalho. The restaurant owner started a GoFundMe, and within two weeks, it raised more than $40,000. Carvalho plans to use the money to pay off debt and take a few days off from work to spend with her family. With the remaining money, she said she will launch a nonprofit to encourage people to pay attention to their surroundings and teach them when to intervene. If you're not aware of Carvalho's story, you should go back and watch my video about the Florida waitress who saved an abused boy by holding up signs asking him if he needed help behind his parents' backs in a restaurant. Police said by the extent of his injuries and the story he told police about the abuse he was enduring at the hands of his mother and stepfather, they believe that if Carvalho hadn't intervened when she did to get the boy help, they probably would have been conducting a homicide investigation very soon. She had the instinct that something wasn't right and she acted on it and she saved that boy's life. I wish her all the best, and many, many more blessings in her future. She's the perfect example of, if you see something, say something. You may just be in the right place at the right time to save a life. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate the time you spend with me on my channel. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on my next video.